breaking down this casino environment today. This tutorial is just more of an explained breakdown. So if you learned something from this video, you should probably subscribe. So let's go. I had the idea to create a casino for a while. The atmosphere is always thrilling and risky, so it's exciting to recreate that. After gathering images from the internet, I managed to capture references for a lot of upcoming details, such as objects, room, lighting, and background elements. First, I started with the table. Now, there are actually a lot of different designs, but I like this poker table the most. I added a circle, increased the vertices, and filled the face. Then went to top view, selected half the vertices, and then just moved them outwards. Then I inserted the face a little bit. And before we do anything, let's just add a solidify modifier, adjust the thickness, and then apply it. I then added an edge loop in between, and then brought that up. And now, with all the edges selected around, I just hit Ctrl B to bevel, and then I customize my bevel settings. Some shade smooth and auto smooth, and then it's looking pretty good. For the bottom bit, just select the inner face, inset it, and then inset it again. And then with Shift Ctrl, I just selected all these faces, and then just extruded them down. I even added a couple more edge loops, and then extruded along the normals to add some detail. This is also a good time to check your item dimensions to make sure that everything is realistically proportional. This is important because we want light to behave realistically according to the inverse square law. Now moving on to materials, you could just go ahead and set up default colors, however they don't really give a realistic result. And actually these tables are made up of a really fine material called felt. It's the same thing that pool tables are made out of. And it's your lucky day because textures.com has a specific material called felt and yeah it's it's perfect for this it comes up with all its ppr textures that are completely free and that's exactly what we want so after bringing that in you might need to project the uv from the top view and then just scaling the uv up so that it's to the right scale and then to bring back the color i just brighten it decrease the red increase the green and it's looking pretty good for the side railings, I added a leather material that's darkened, and then after that I added a bump texture, and the bump is what really sells it. Now, this table is looking pretty good so far, but it's too simple. And if you notice, these poker tables actually have like gold linings that separate their game bets, and it looks like a really cool thing. So in my vector program, I just created my custom gold lining. I'm sure you can do this with any vector program, and it gives you customization options as well. So after bringing that as a texture, I added a mix RGB set to add, bring out the factor to one and it was looking pretty good. And with texture coordinates, you can always adjust the scale to what, how you originally want it to be. Cool trick is to add a gamma node and then just increase it so it has this fade feeling and to correct back the color, you just want to add in a hue saturation. And the gamma allows you to have this really nice faded feeling that's really good for realism. Moving on to the poker chips, I created a cylinder scaled down and straight to texturing I grabbed this image off of Google somewhere and it works really well because I can just project from view and align things up. Then for some more detail I inset the face and then extrude this part a little down so it gives a little bit more of so you get that nice indent that casino chips always have. Then I added edge loops wherever the white parts lined up and then with those faces selected, I just put them to a white part. Now once we have one chip, I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. I found that the best way to stack is to just duplicate using Alt-D and just shifting this left to right. No stack is perfect and you can see this in various photos. You also want to switch to the other axes and make sure you switch that along too so they're randomized. Oh, and on top of that, you want to rotate them along the Z-axis to completely randomize the chip rotation. I also recommend moving these chips to a separate collection where it will be easier to organize into different colors. Speaking of colors, um, to do colors, you just Shift-D now because we're going to be applying different material. Head over to the shading tab, duplicate the material. And essentially what we're doing to change the color is just adding a hue saturation node. 
and then just shifting the hue until we get what we want. There's a lot of flexibility. No stack is identical, so you want to uh, vary the amount of chips. You want to change the location, the rotations, and all of it. For the color black, I just desaturated it and bumped up the contrast. And for white, I inverted the color with an invert node and then just messed around with the contrast settings. The rest of the scene is pretty much self-explanatory. You just want to be positioning the chips to however you see fit. There's a lot of creativity that goes into this. You can also rotate some of these chips against each other to make it more interesting. Creating the whiskey bottles had to be one of my favorite things. It was so fun. So I started with a cube, added in a reference image for the bottle that I kind of went for. And just selecting the faces, I was able to extrude and scale to match the proportions of the bottle. After I got the general shape, I went straight to adding edge loops to customize the shape a little bit more. I even tailored it to a specific kind of bottle that I liked. After that, I would select all the edges and then slowly bevel them equally. And I would do this for all the other bevels to ensure a nice clean uh, seam between all the edges. Some bevels are harsher while others are softer. After that, I just removed this face on the top and then added a rim even. If you head over to materials and add an environment texture, you can immediately see the effect of glass by adding in a glass PSDF and switching the cycles. The problem with our object right now is that it has infinitely thin planes, which means light can't behave how we want it to. So to fix that, we just want to add a solidify modifier so that light can actually have something to pass through. To make the actual whiskey, I just scaled down a version of the bottle, added an edge loop, and then just deleted everything above that. Once I had this liquid shape, I just customized the glass color to be of an orange, darkish whiskey color and it works pretty good. And whether you noticed it in the sequence or not, I actually added so many surface imperfections in this bottle. You can see the fingerprints and smudges. And I think that takes this whole scene to the next level and it was really cool. So to do that, I first selected some edges to mark a seam so I could unwrap. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to texture paint my own custom glossy map so it can define the roughness. And I actually got my glossy map from this artist named Cornelius Damridge. He's a 3D artist god, and that's all I can say. And, and anyways, on his Gumroad, he actually has free 8K tileable glossy maps. And these are one of the best free resources I've ever found across the internet, so please check them out. I found myself using these free glossy maps in a lot of other projects that I worked on, and it's a really good way to add detail. Anyways, I think the ability to paint your own surface imperfections gives such a higher level of creative control, and it's also really, really fun. And once you save that image and then bring it over and plug that into the roughness, you can immediately see the effect taking place. For the Jack Daniel sticker, I essentially just followed Ian Hubert's lazy tutorials on stickers, and that took like a minute. That made it look really good as well. And yeah, that's the bottle. All the glass objects are even simpler than that, they're just cylinders with the same glass material. Also notice how I made the whiskey bottle darker and small glasses clearer. This also means that the ashtray is pretty simple and straightforward, it's the same cylinder applied. After I modeled the cigar and added some imperfections, I actually imported a video texture of the smoke. Um, and that's a really fast way to add really cool detail without render times. Through the use of emission, transparent, and add shaders, I was able to isolate the smoke and control its intensity. And yeah, it ends up looking pretty good. I learned how to create the stack of banknotes from CG Matters stack of money tutorial. He goes into detailed steps, as well as including a lot of procedural workflow. So yeah, after looking that up, it's just a matter of array modifiers, random transform, um, proportional editing, and then there's the stack of money. The cards are even simpler. They are planes with image textures. I actually have a deck of cards lying around, so I just took a picture of that and was able to just use it. And after you buffer the vertices, it's pretty much done. It's just about duplicating, positioning them, and then changing the UV map. The deck was also done using the same technique as the money stack. Now it's time to make the rest of the room. And again, this was based on my own personal reference. Um, a thing I found was if you searched up um, Damask Patterns on Google, you're going to get 
hundreds of thousands of different patterns of walls and floors that you can use. Um, especially if you search up seamless, you're more likely to get usable results. You just got to check their usage rights and all. But I think this can be a really good start into creating um, a classic room like this. Anyways, I actually found one to use on textures.com. Um, it's this beautiful royal fabric that came up with all of its textures, so that's a plus. And it looked really good after changing the size. For the wall, I just had a plane extruded um, to the sides. Added in a bunch of edge loops so I could extrude these other parts to give the wall some shape. Um, on top of that, I added a wall trim by extruding out that little part. I then used one of the damask patterns I found on the internet and I really like the style of this one specifically. After beveling the edges and adding materials to the wall trim, it was already looking good. Using images as planes, I was also adding like this um, frame painting almost. You can definitely use any other painting or art for your own scene. I just really like how the Ace of Spades tied in with the uh, gambling and all. Now I actually made curtains around this, and this was pretty easy. I added in a plane, subdivided a bunch of times. I assigned only the top edge to a vertex group, and then animated that vertex group scaled down as a shape key. And then after applying cloth modifier and turning on self collision, you can see where this is going. Um, I then added a torus, deleted half of it, and then extruded it out. And the goal of this was to have it interact with the cloth as a collision and this allowed me to have that nice fold feeling. After deleting the shape keys and applying the cloth modifier um, and shade smooth, it turned out pretty good. I applied the other royal texture I found and even used the same texture as a bump node to top it off. Then I just used a mirror modifier to duplicate it in the other direction. I like the idea of having little gold ornaments, so I created a curve. And then after putting some depth into it, I customized my own bevel with a profile to get a nice ornament feeling and after scaling different parts and applying the same gold material it was um, a pretty cool thing to have in the background i then duplicated the table to the back because after creating a camera i wanted that in the composition i duplicated the floor as the ceiling obviously this is where you need to make your creative decisions about how you want your room to look like and how you are going to design it um, the technical tools can only take you so far Making the chairs was very rewarding. Um, I just started with a cube, scaled down to match the portions of the back, added a subdivision surface modifier, and then adding edge loops to define the shape to almost like a cushion. After using proportional editing to scale down different versions and pulling edges inward, bumping up the division surface, the chair was supposed to be a solo element in the shot anyway, so I wasn't too worried about putting a lot of detail, especially because it was going to be darkly lit. To make those indents, I applied the subdivision surface and then selected various points to indent slowly with proportional editing. And then with those vertices selected, I beveled them to one segment and then extruded that part out. And then with another subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth, it looked pretty good. The standings was done by creating a circle that, with a lot of edge loops um, scaled up. Um, I added a circle curve with depth converted to mesh and then added these two cylinders at the side. After that, I applied the same leather material, a gold texture applied to the stand with already its imperfections. And I think that's a good looking chair as a secondary element to the scene. Um, after that, I just instant the chairs to different locations so that they had a nice composition. So that is the entire process of creating a casino. However, I've received a lot of questions asking me on how I achieved this cinematic quality you see and yes there is a huge difference between what comes out of my blender and what you see in the final image uh, here you can see how my pros processing bring these renders to life and i will briefly explain my process in achieving these results i always want to figure out good lighting i found out that having contrast in shots are very appealing so in this case i wanted one side of the table to be really bright while the rest of their surroundings are really dark I also found out that the higher focal length of the camera ended up in a tighter and more cinematic feeling. Then for the depth of field, I would create an empty scale down to the object I wanted to focus. 
then in the camera settings, I would turn on depth of field and then parent the focus object to that empty. And that way I will have control over where the focus of the camera will be. And this can be useful for animation where you want the focus to change. Anyways, you can exaggerate the depth of field by lowering the f-stop. Now, Blender's natural bokeh is always a sphere, um, which is not really cinematic. So I like to make things more cinematic by making it anamorphic. And to do that, I just increase the ratio of the aperture in the camera settings. And the higher this number, the more exaggerated the effect. Just changing from standard to an anamorphic, um, you immediately get cinematic results. Adding a layer of fog is also cinematic. So to do that, I created a cube and then in the shading tab, I would add a principal volume, um, change the color to a coolish hue and then decrease the density until it looked right. The fog also emphasizes any lightings in the scene, so this is perfect for cinematic purposes. Quick tip is you can use Control b to immediately render any section of the image that you want, and this can be really good in speeding up creative decisions. So after rendering out from Blender, I would move on to After Effects to apply my post-processing. And for the sake of the fact that a lot of people are probably using different applications, I'm just going to generalize the layers that I build up. So firstly, I'd like to add a little bit of chromatic aberration, as well as some additional lens bokeh effects such as dirt or dust. Then I would add a subtle glow, emphasizing the highlights a little bit. And then another layer, emphasizing that glow and highlight, almost like stretching it to a stylized effect. I then will increase the contrast just to give a little bit more difference for cinematic purposes. After that, I will also add some intentional film grain in order to ground the shot in reality, more specifically for video. And finally, I will spend a lot of time in my color grading where I will darken the shadows to a bluish minty hue. And this is where I think the completed post-processing really pays off to a well-created final image. So yeah, that's been a look into how I built up this specific casino environment. I thought it was fun. Hopefully you learned a few things from this video. I know you like this breakdown, so if you aren't already subscribed, please do. It really does support me in my growth. You can also follow me on Instagram, um, link in the description. I post a lot more frequent stories and updates on projects that I'm doing, so that's fun. But yeah, I already have some really cool ideas I would love to work on and possibly share with this channel again. So yeah, I'll see you.